All right, yo, what's going on, guys? It's Thunder, and today I want to talk about the third defeat, or sorry, this is actually the second defeat Ganon at Noah Serum Tournament. I apologize, my brain is thinking about the third defeat Ganon at Noah Serum Tournament, which is actually starting today, and I am uh, not only a commentator, but also a participant, so I am definitely thinking about that. That's where my brain is, but I do want to talk about the second tournament first. And uh, I want to talk to you guys about some of my strategies, how I did so well in this tournament. So I actually ended up finishing third in this tournament uh, as a pretty big underdog going into the tournament. I entered the tournament with a time of 1848. Uh, I pulled off an upset in the first round against someone who had a better time than myself. And then I am going to show footage for, from excuse me, the semifinal. Uh, against Lake, which uh, has gone down as quite a popular matchup. Um, going forward, this match is definitely remembered, definitely one of the better uh, and favorite matches from these tournaments so far. So I'm going to show some footage from this matchup. It's a matchup that I actually lost, but it's not a loss that I have any shame of. It's actually a loss that I'm extremely proud of because I took it to a Game 3. Lake is one of the best Ocarina of Time players uh, ever, <laughs> honestly. He's uh, he's really, really great, and uh, he's a good friend of mine, but uh, his domination of the leaderboards is, is absolutely crazy. So uh, going into this match, I was extremely nervous, but I also knew that I had absolutely nothing to lose. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to get into uh, some of the things that I do for these tournaments, some of the things that help me perform well, and uh, with that being said, I don't always perform well, you know, going into any competitive event, uh, you are susceptible to not being on your game that day, so um, I hope that I am on my game this weekend, and it should be a lot of fun, but yeah, uh, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what I've been doing to prepare for these tournaments, and uh, especially things that I've been doing actually on the day of races, so I suppose one thing is making sure that I'm very consistent with playing Ocarina of Time and running this category. I do speedruns and stream pretty much every day. I'll take a day off maybe once a week or once every other week. Um, and yeah, so I am speedrunning this game all the time. And when I'm not streaming, I'm always doing a lot of offline practice. And my offline practice will normally be things that I'm actually not implementing in runs yet, things that I'm really learning, like Instaclip, um, things unbuffered that I'm not doing yet in runs, like unbuffered Vine Clip or unbuffered B1. But I do a lot, of, I play this game so much, and I even still play this game casually sometimes. So I'm always playing OOT. And that's something that definitely helps me stay loose for whenever I need to get competitive and race somebody. Um, I try not to warm up or stream or do runs too much right before my race. I think an hour to 30 minutes, an hour can even be too much, and I've actually been uh, kind of slowly decreasing my time that I take warming up lately. I started with about an hour, but now I'm around like 30 minutes that I take to warm up, which uh, is pretty good. You know, it's my nerves really build up before something, so it's not really good for me to give myself a bunch of time to think about something. So give myself a little bit of time to warm up. I mean, I'm not gonna be making any major adjustments that are gonna win me the race, you know, uh, right before the tournament. So you don't need to warm up for too long. I do wanna talk about some really, really important things though. And this is it. So I actually recently got a coach. I got a speedrunning coach and it's my friend Criticals. And he is always looking for people to ask him for help and for people to coach. So I'm sure he won't mind me saying, if you guys need some help, go hit him up on Discord. You can find him in the OOT Discord. Um, but yeah, for sure. So some of the things I talked to Criticals about before, I actually didn't talk to him before this race. I quote unquote hired him uh, right before my third place match, which I ended up winning. And I was going up against a very, very good player, uh, a player. Uh, named Zach or called Zbarf. He is a very, very dangerous player. He has a 1915 uh, PB, but that PB does not even come close to uh, where his actual talent 
is. It's it's not a good represent, representation of how good he is. This is someone who does insta clip with a 19 minute time. Um, someone who's very very good at the game and someone who's gonna have a huge PB soon. So shout out to Zach. Um, but yeah, definitely a a matchup I was going into with not really expecting anything. Just um, not really sure what was gonna happen and just going in and playing my best. And so. Um, Something that Criticals is very, very good at is I do listen to him because he knows this category very well and he has a very good time, good place on the leaderboards, but he is very, very good at the psychological aspect of this game. And so that's really what I needed was a psychological edge going into these races. And so I do try to talk to him on my days of races and at least once before the tournament. And something that he told me, one thing that he really told me that I think had a huge impact on me in the third place match. Uh, and this is actually uh, in this video, this is where I pull ahead of Lake in game two. And uh, it, basically if you're in the void and someone is you know, really struggling like this to do void warp, uh, it's kind of a meme that I always say that about Lake. I'm sorry, dude. Uh, it's not true. You're insane at collapse. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's pretty much over when, when you get it and someone is, is having a little bit of a hard time um, got to kind of hope for a, a, a crash or a, da a Ganon death for your opponent. And of course, we never hope that. But anyways, to go back to what I was saying, as uh, we go into this game three here, which is crazy. Um, yeah, so basically, um, Criticals told me to not watch my opponent race. Um, and so normally, I would have the stream up and be uh, kind of peering over to see where my opponent is at. And he just said, don't do that. Just don't do it. Uh, and I found that I was much less distracted in my third place race than through the rest of the tournament. And it really, really helped me. So I would really recommend that to you guys. Just race the best that you can. Just, you know, try to get a, a time close to your PB and just do the best you can. And, you know, go into, go into the tournament with a plan, right? Go into each race with a plan. Um, something that Crit also helped me with was, uh, showing me a, nor like a, a, a setup or wrong warp, not actually um, just back walking and then doing backflips, but a setup that pretty much always works. I think you call that a normalized setup, uh, a setup that uh, you know you use in certain situations. But yeah, so uh, I'm not gonna explain it, but stuff like that really helps me. Um, you want to make sure, and I'd say this is the last thing, as definitely pay attention to this video because this is where Lake and I get synced up, and it shows how good of a player Lake is. How, where he is right now and how he just catches up with me. But this is really important. The three big tricks, and this is kind of where that setup comes into play, Gim, uh, Wrong Warp, and Void Warp or Instaclip, you need to make sure at whatever cost that you get those tricks. That, I think, is the most important thing in these tournaments. You need to get those, and you really want to get those first try. I mean, Gim first try, I show a lot of Gim in this video, um, Gim first try, like, is a huge predictor for who's going to win the race. If you get Gim first try, you're in it. You are in the race, no matter who you're facing, if you get Gim first try. And that is so, so important. Obviously, if you miss wrong warp, I mean, it's going to be really hard for you to come back. But, uh, yeah, those three tricks, if you get them first try, you're in it. And that would be my, my biggest... My biggest advice is to do whatever you can in practice, in warm-ups, to make sure and during the race that you get those three tricks. And those are the most important things. Movement is not nearly as important and uh, buffers are not nearly as important as well. In fact, buffers can actually aid your performance in the tournament. And so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk about a couple things and really just kind of show some highlights from this match, as you guys can see, we are synced up. Uh, absolutely insane. Uh, the commentators were having a really good time. Chat was having a really good time. And this is what it's all about, you know? Going down to the wire with one of the best players in uh, a match that will send the victor to the finals. Like, that's what it's all about. You know, you're going against your friend who's just an insane player, and uh, you're going to give it your best shot. And I think I said that out loud to myself. I was just like... This is what it's all about, <laughs> uh, even though no one could hear me. So it was a lot of fun. And yeah, this video will just conclude with showing that uh, Lake gets Instaclip first try. 
and uh, you know just again showing how important these big tricks are and how they can effectively end a race for uh, your opponent. So yeah, guys, that is pretty much it. I hope you may have learned something. This was kind of an informal commentary. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the first race of the third tournament is, uh, well, I guess it wasn't first rock for Lake, but you know, he, he got Instaclip, which was huge. Um, first race for the third tournament is tonight, Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I will see all of you guys there because I will be commentating that match. So yeah, bye.